an Egypt airplane carrying 66 people from Paris to Cairo swerved abruptly and plunged thousands of feet before disappearing Thursday, this May the 19th, 2016 from radar screens over the Mediterranean Sea. Investigators said they were looking into all possible causes, but suggested that a terrorism attack was more likely than a technical failure. As night fell, the airline issued a brief statement saying wreckage believed to be from Egypt Air Flight 804 was found floating in the water near the Greek island Carpathos. But a senior Greek air safety official disputed that account, and the airline's vice chairman, Ahmed Adel, later told CNN that the information it had received about the find was not accurate. It was the latest in a series conflicting statements issued as authorities in Egypt and Greece raced to find signs of the plane. Egypt's civil aviation minister, Sherif Pathi, cautioned that it was too soon to draw conclusions about what caused the disaster, but he acknowledged at the news conference in Cairo that the possibility that it was a terror attack was higher than the possibility of having technical failure. A senior U.S. law enforcement official who had also been briefed on the crash also said investigators were leaning towards a terrorist attack, but had not ruled out other possible scenarios. The Airbus A320 carrying 56 passengers and 10 crew members lost contact with air traffic control a little under four hours into the flight from Paris to Cairo shortly after entering Egyptian airspace. Greek air traffic controllers were the last to make contact with the plane at about 2.30 a.m. local time as it passed over the island of Kay. Kostas Litsarakis, the head of Greece's civil aviation department, told Reuters news agency that the pilot did not mention any problems. The Greek Ministry of Defense said at a news briefing that the plane appeared to have made two sharp turns before it disappeared. Greek Defense Minister Panos Komenos told journalists that it turned 90 degrees left and then a 360 degree turn toward the right, dropping from 38,000 to 15,000 feet, and then it was lost at about 10,000 feet. Investigators were examining several potential reasons for the turns other than mechanical failure, but the theories all have holes that may not be filled until the wreckage and cockpit voice and data recorders are retrieved. A bomb may have exploded inside the aircraft, but an explosion at that altitude probably would have caused disintegration of the plane. Radar data suggests the jet remained intact, at least until it reached 10,000 feet. A hijacker may have also tried to commandeer the aircraft, resulting in a struggle in the cockpit. That might explain why the plane reportedly veered sharply before it began to fall, but that situation probably would have generated a distress call. It was also possible that a pilot may have intentionally crashed to the plane. The U.S. National Transportation Safety Board concluded that's what happened in 1999 when an Egypt Air flight from Los Angeles to Cairo crashed into the Atlantic Ocean about 60 miles south of Nantucket Island, killing all 217 people on board. Egyptian authorities blamed a mechanical failure. At Cairo International Airport, anguished relatives of the plane's passengers had been waiting since dawn for news about their loved ones. One woman in tears emerged from the hall with her husband. She said that her son-in-law was one of the security personnel on the plane. She said, we don't know anything. We don't understand. We don't know what happened to the plane. A woman waiting with her husband, son, and daughter collapsed, overwhelmed in her daughter's arms. Of the 56 passengers, 30 were Egyptian, 15 were from France, two from Iraq, and one each from Britain, Belgium, Saudi Arabia, Sudan, Chad, Portugal, Algeria, Kuwait, and Canada. Two babies and one child were on the flight. U.S. counterterrorism officials were running the names on the flight manifest through terrorist watch lists to see whether any of the passengers or crew may have extremist ties. President Obama's top counterterrorism advisor, Lisa Monaco, briefed him at the White House early Thursday, this May the 19th, 2016, about the missing Egypt Air jetliner. No U.S. citizens were listed on the passenger manifest, but U.S. officials were checking further to confirm that. An official says that we are providing families of the passengers with all the information available to us. If someone wants to know now what happened to the plane, we can't tell them since we still do not know. He said that the plane left Paris Charles de Gaulle Airport for Cairo at about 11.10 p.m. The plane was cruising at 37,000 feet when it disappeared from radar screens at about 2.40 a.m. During the transfer to Cairo airspace, Greek controllers were unable to contact the pilot. 
At 2.50 a.m., air traffic control confirmed it had lost contact with the plane. Egypt Air initially said that the plane sent out a distress signal two hours after the last confirmed radar contact, but officials said that this was an error on Egypt Air's part and that no emergency calls were made from the plane. Egypt's military forces launched air and sea searches, and search and rescue teams from Greece were also combining the Mediterranean. A search team found two large red and white plastic objects floating in the Mediterranean, about 230 miles southeast of Crete, which may be debris from the plane. In France, the suddenness of the aircraft's disappearance raised suspicions of foul play. John Paul Trotic, former president of the French Air Accident Investigation Bureau, told Europe One Radio that it was unlikely to have been a mechanical failure. He said, we can consider certain hypotheses. There's a strong possibility of an explosion on board from a bomb or suicide bomber. He continues to say, the idea of a technical accident when weather conditions were good seems also possible, but not that likely. We could also consider a missile, which is what happened to the Malaysia Airlines aircraft in July of 2014. If the crew didn't send an alert signal, it's because what happened was very sudden. He continues saying a problem with an engine or a technical fault would not produce an immediate accident. In this case, the crew did not react, which makes us think of an explosion. French Foreign Minister Jean-Marc Arault was more guarded in his assessment. After visiting passengers' families at a crisis center near Charles de Gaulle Airport, he told reporters, It's obviously a moment of intense emotion. These families have just learned of the disappearance of an Egyptian aircraft 20 minutes before landing. It just disappeared and has given no signal since. We're in direct contact with the Egyptian and Greek authorities. Information is going around, but nothing is confirmed. He also called for solidarity and compassion for the anguished families and says speculation and theorizing should stop. He says we have to remain extremely careful before commenting or expressing theories about what happened. We are in contact with the Egyptian authorities and we have proposed our help to search for this aircraft. The most important thing now is to show solidarity with the families who are in grief and suffering. When we have firm, verified information, we will be told. Jean Surrette, a former French commercial pilot, told France's BFM TV, there are only three realistic hypotheses. The aircraft was hit by a missile. There is a major technical incident that led to it exploding mid-flight or something exploded inside. He said one thing is certain, it happened suddenly. There was no message, no signal. The pilots had no time to say anything. It happened so quickly. French President Francois Hollande called an emergency meeting at the Elsie Palace. Prime Minister Manuel Valls said no theory can be ruled out as a cause of the incident. He said we are in close contact with the Egyptian authorities, both civil and military. He continues to say the Egyptian authorities have already sent air reconnaissance teams to the site and France is ready to help with search that the Egyptian authorities ask. Hollande spoke to the Egyptian counterpart, Abdel Fattah Sisi, early Thursday, this May the 19th, 2016. Afterward, Hollande's office said two countries would cooperate to find out what happened. Egypt Air said the plane had gone into service in 2003 and was on its fifth flight of the day, Wednesday. It had flown into Tunisia and Eritrea earlier that day. The airline said the captain had more than 6,000 flying hours, including 2,100 on the A320. The co-pilot had 2,766. Egypt Air said there was no freight, special cargo, or dangerous goods on board. A Greek defense ministry said it was also investigating an account from a merchant ship captain of seeing a flame in the sky about 130 nautical miles south of the Greek island of Karpathos. A statement from Airbus said the aircraft involved was delivered to Egypt Air from the production line in November 2003. It had accumulated about 48,000 flight hours. In March, an Egypt Air plane was hijacked and diverted to Cyprus. The man who admitted to the hijacking and is described by Cypriot authorities as psychologically unstable is in custody in that country. In October, a Russian Airbus A321 operated by Metrojet crashed in the Sinai Peninsula, killing 224 people on board. Russia said the plane was probably downed by a bomb and the militant group Islamic State claimed responsibility. Islamic State's affiliate in Sinai is involved in daily fighting against the Egyptian military there. However, Israeli experts on the organization say it is not known if it possesses the type of long-range weapon that could down a jet over the sea at night.
Aviv Oreg, a security consultant and former Israeli intelligence officer who specialized in Islamist militant groups, told the Times that as far as we know, they don't have the rockets that can reach the cruising altitude at which a plane flies. It was too high for their rockets.